Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster. Our topic today is brain waves and reading brain waves. And this is going to get pretty futuristic pretty fast. I'm joined with one of the experts in uh, computer brainwave uh, reading uh, computers, machines reading brain waves, no other than Ramses L. Cade. Ramses is the founder of Neurable. Neurable is a loop portfolio company. Welcome, Ramses. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about brain tech. We're talking about how the brain works, about brain tech, and about a product that you have coming to the market, a consumer product around reading uh, brain waves, which is uh, quite uh, uh, impressive. So welcome. And maybe to kick us off, Ramses, uh, what, how should uh, we think about Nurable's vision? And yeah, Nurable's vision at, at the biggest level is to create what we call a world without limitations. And what that means is that whether you're somebody who's differently abled or fully abled, you're able to be participatory in, in the world in the same way. And so in order to achieve that vision, our mission has been, how do we create an everyday brain computer interface that can allow people to interact, create, uh, and participate in the world in an equal way? Amazing. And when we think about a brain computer interface, what should someone who's not as familiar with them, what do they need to know for just the basics? Well, there's different kinds. Uh, at the like highest level, there's really two. The first one is uh, invasive systems, and that's where you think of companies like Paradromics, Neuralink, et cetera, where it requires surgery to go into the brain. Uh, and then you have non-invasive, which is uses technology like electroencephalography or um, FNIRS, which is uh, near infrared light. And those don't require any surgery, but they also provide you less signal quality. And so you kind of have your trade-off there between performance that requires surgery uh, and then ease of use, but much more difficult signal to, to analyze. Let's start with a quickly kind of on the invasive side. It's something that you're not doing, but just what would be the, uh, the use cases for invasive uh, brain computer interfaces? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the way I, I like to think about invasive systems is, is similar to something like a prosthetic limb where you really will only get them if something goes wrong. Uh, you have epilepsy, you're quadriplegic. The risks currently just don't outweigh the reward. Uh, and so while it could enable you to communicate uh, very rapidly, and there's actually you know, a recent video of, of somebody doing that, uh, and it can let you do you know, the kind of science fiction ideas of what people mm. think brain computer interfaces can do, uh, they also carry a lot of, a lot of uh, risks to them. Understandable. So let's uh, shift over to Neurable's uh, hemisphere here and about the, uh, the non-invasive. And I remember uh, five years ago, me with you back when you were just coming out of University of Michigan and uh, there was a car, it was quite uh, impressive. Uh, we had uh, uh, this robotic car and uh, you could think and it could uh, stop and start based on uh, reading uh, brain waves. And so it, it was quite magical. And at the basis, how does that, uh, how does that work? How, how is that even possible? Yeah, so to answer that, I kind of have to go back into like what makes Neurable special. Uh, so what we do is we're a machine learning company uh, that specializes on filtration and classification of brain data. Brain data is, is a very different animal than to the types of sensors that we're used to. Uh, these days like accelerometers or voice recognition and so the technology was developed at the university of michigan uh, we spun it out uh, and developed this first technology in our first demo basically we had to use a gel cap system uh, and then put gel inside of it. and I actually remember gel going down your face and i was like oh my god gene monsters has gel going down his face in my was, office uh, <laughs> just a, a mere inconvenience for the magic that was happening but effectively you could uh, using a brain signal, tell the car to go in multiple directions, to stop, to go. You know, it, it allowed for a, a deep degree of, of, of control. Uh, and that was really just to show off what our signal processing could do. Uh, and over, over the last five years, our goal has been, how do we maintain that level of quality, but move toward headsets that can actually be used in the real world? So in, in 2011, we were in these gel headsets. Uh, and in 2000. Uh, 17 is when we showed off our first kind of like big public showing. And that was a virtual reality system that had just had six electrodes and required no gel, but enabled people to grab objects, throw them, interact, do a whole bunch of other stuff. And then moving forward, we've started to integrate our technology 
while maintaining that performance into a pair of headphones. And that's where N10 comes in. Um, and we've solved a lot of the key issues that consumers had, which is, you know, they don't like spikes. They don't like hard setups. They, they want things to work. And so you can see it's stitched into the actual cloth itself, the, the sensor. Uh, but effectively, we can give you the ability to not only understand yourself cognitively, but also to control uh, different aspects of your computer or your phone. So let's talk about moving from uh, really uh, what is uh, work in the lab to a commercial product. It's a important step. It's a, a consumer level product. You, you showed it. It just looks like uh, a lot of headphones on the market, but it is quite different. And uh, maybe you could kind of walk through what, what is the substance as a consumer? Why should they care about this uh, NTEG? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, I'll kind of answer that in two, two points, which is one, like building an actual consumer product is very different than building a demo for, you know, investors or scientists or anybody. So there was a lot of know-how and changes that had to be done. You know, the, the requirement that a consumer needs is they want it to work every time and they want it to work easily. Uh, and so during the last two years, when we've been focusing on headphones, that was what our biggest challenges were which is how do we make it work consistently all the time? Uh, and then the second aspect to it is, you know, through the development of signal, signal uh, uh, data collection, essentially, and signal processing, we were able to improve the performance over time and get it to work inside the form factors that we wanted to. And that's all through machine learning. Got it. So this, the, the headphones are reading your EEG uh, brain waves, is that mm -hmm. correct? Coming off and uh, so even, uh, I, I would guess it works easier with somebody with my hairstyle, but uh, how, how do things like hair impact uh, the effectiveness of it? Well, I, you didn't know me, but uh, bef before this, but I actually used to have really short hair, and amazing. I promise, yeah, <laughs> uh, back then I used to work in a lab where there was gel everywhere, uh, and ever since we got it working on these dry electrodes, uh, I've let my hair grow out and. Uh, I can tell you, I just got done with many demos today and these worked great. So uh, that's part of the like work and difficulty. You know, a lot of people just think that tech is cool, but a lot of the know-how is actually, how do you make tech that works with all these constraints mm -hmm. that, that consumers have? In a laboratory, you can spend 10 minutes setting something up on a person, but if for a consumer, they just want to put it on and have it work. And, and what is the utility of it ultimately? Yeah, the main utility... There's, there's uh, two categories. The first one's analytics. Uh, so you're able to understand uh, basically what, how focused you are during the day uh, and how impactful distractions were for you. And then when a distraction happens or when you fall out of focus, we can create a small tone to get you back into focus. So it helps you basically be more productive during the day. Uh, and then on top of that, um, it lets you understand when during the day you are the most productive. So you can do your hardest work there and then the rest of the day focus on emails, et cetera. So essentially it gives you a little bit more time during the day. So is the um, analytics piece, uh, again, this is reading your EEG brainwaves. Exactly. And then Got some it. of the other capabilities will, which we'll be showing off much later um, are abilities to actually control your computer or other types of devices using the headphones. Now, yeah, that, that sounds like a, a light year leap uh, into the future and maybe kind of just describe uh, what that would look like. What would be, would it be unlocking your computer? What kind of functionality do you envision? Let's just say over the next five years to be able to do. Yeah, our, our main, so I'm going to talk about the next few months is what I'm going to, because we're going to be revealing these pretty soon. Um, but basically we're really focused right now on how do we make individuals more productive? So imagine you get a, you know, we have two types of, of, inter, of, of methods of, of interactions. One of them is passive and the other one is active. Passively means that without you volitionally asking for something to happen, it occurs. So if we see that you're entering into focus mode, we can turn do not disturb mode on your computer on and put noise cancellation on, on your headphones. And it actually keeps you focused longer. Uh, on active controls, uh, let's say a notification comes in and you want to ignore it. Well, we can understand that and you can volitionally, without having to move your mouse or do something else, push it away. Or you can mute or unmute your Zoom calls, uh, or you can control your slides. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this type of technology. Essentially uh, with your thoughts. Yeah, essentially, yes, yes. Um, we can't get into the details on how now, but this type of capability will be available to people. And uh, so we're talking 
a year you talked about in the next few months we make an announcement so probably available sometime in 2022 uh well the headphones will be available uh in 2022 the you know we're just revealing more and more stuff uh as we you know continue to show off the capabilities of our product uh and so you know previously what we've re revealed is what we can do on the analytics side uh, in the future we're going to discuss more on the interaction side Okay, I want to talk uh, finish on the interaction side, but before we leave Enteg, uh, estimated price point. Yeah, so N10 is a first and foremost a premium, awesome sounding pair of headphones. Uh, so you're gonna you're paying what you would pay for a premium set of headphones, which is about three ninety nine. Uh, currently, we're doing our Indiegogo campaign, uh, so you can get some right now for half off, which is pretty awesome. Okay, but still, I mean, this is uh, I would have guessed it would have been more than that, so. <laughs> uh, good to know that uh, some of this technology is at the, I guess, kind of at the consumer, uh, consumer-ish price point, Absolutely. definitely consumer price point. Uh, let's fast forward. Uh, let's go 10 years out from now. How do you think the average person is going to, uh, if you go up to someone on the street and ask them about brain tech and brain computer interface, and uh, what do you think their response is going to be? I hope that it's so normal that they'll be like, why are we still talking about this? You know, it's kind of like touchscreen now. If you talk to somebody and you're like, tell me about touchscreens and, and you just pull out your phone and you're like, what are you talking about? We use it all the time. You know, um, with the, the systems that we're working on here, we believe have the potential to replace what your phone is doing right now. Um, about 80% of the interactions, for example, uh, texting or selecting songs or doing other things like that, uh, we believe hearables, so headphones, earbuds, and eventually imagine glasses that have sensors built into the rims can be used to control your augmented reality device or, or you know, respond to a message that you get from a person that, that you hear through your, your AirPods, essentially. Uh, and so in about 10 years, we want to introduce the world to more and more applications and capabilities that enable us to develop that future. Do you think uh, on that time period, a decade from now, uh, you're going to be able to think of a message and compose a, a text message with your thoughts? I can't get too much into our roadmap from that perspective, but uh, we have some tech in-house that we believe can get us to that point. Uh, and I think it's one of the big special sauces that we have here at Nervil. Now that That is uh, just a vertical growth and functionality around this. And uh, that's just for kind of... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of the kind of mainstream applications and I can imagine some of those other, you mentioned the prosthetic side of this too, and just helping when uh, people are in a tight spot. I think that is really powerful. I uh, remember when we first met, that was an important part for what you're building. And uh, I can sense it today that that is uh, that world without uh, limitations and boundaries, big deal. I'm glad there are people like you in the world that are pursuing these because it is uh, way outside what I will ever be able to uh, assemble. Uh, can't wait to uh, be using N10 in the headphones and uh, appreciate you joining us. We're gonna, this is such a good topic. Love to have you back and uh, appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. And next time I come back, I'd love to show a little bit more of the uh, technology in, in real time. Amazing. On behalf of Ramses, uh, Gene, and Loop TV, and all these incredible tech that's coming down the road, bye for now.